The Nordic countries are often regarded as being some of the best countries in the world in terms of human development, living standards and economy strength. This region comprises of five sovereign states – Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway and Sweden. There are also autonomous regions and territories such as the Faroe Islands and Greenland, which both belong to the Kingdom of Denmark. These five nations have a combined population of 27.5 million. The Nordic countries are rather sparsely populated. If we were to combine them, they would have a population density of around 7.6 people per kilometer squared, which would make them one of the least densely populated countries on Earth. The combined GDP or economy size of this region would be a very impressive 1.8 trillion US dollars which would place them in the top 10 in the world, giving them a similar economy size to that of South Korea, and in fact more than Russia, a country with a population over five times larger. The GDP per capita of this country will be close to 67,000 US dollars, which would rank them 15th in the world which is extremely impressive as most of the countries at the top of this list are small, extremely wealthy nations like Monaco, Hong Kong and Liechtenstein. Area size of this country would be around 3.4 million kilometers squared, which would make it the seventh biggest country on earth, placing them above India and below Australia, and quite a bit below Australia too, at roughly half the size. So, so far very impressive from the Nordic people. If they were a single country, they will be competing with the big boys on the world stage. And again, for a population of less than Delhi, this is admirable. Now, this next section, believe it or not, is even more impressive. Let's take a look at how each of these countries rank in quality of life statistics. So first things first, in the Human Development Index, all five nations rank in the top 11 with Norway actually taking the crown for the most developed nation on earth. Combined, they would place around 7th in the world. For the Corruption Index, Denmark takes the crown as the least corrupt nation in the world. Combined, they would rank about 6th in the world, with only Iceland letting them down. For the Fragile State Index, Finland, Norway and Iceland rank as 1st, 2nd and 3rd respectively. Denmark ranks as 5th and Sweden 8th. For economic freedom, they would rank around the 17th mark. For global economy competitiveness, they would rank about 14th. For environmental performance, around 9th, in which Denmark places 1st in the world. In the good country ranking, they would place around 9th, with Finland securing that 1st place spot. The global gender gap places them 5th in the world, most notably Iceland, Finland and Norway ranking 1st, 2nd and 3rd respectively. Only Denmark lets the team down here, placing in 28th place. For the World Mothers Report, which analyses countries based on the health of mothers and their children, they would rank 4th, with Finland taking yet another top spot crown. And finally, one of the most important rankings when it comes to determining the quality of life of citizens is the World Happiness Ranking. Quite simply, the more developed, safe and prosperous a country is, the happier the people will be. For this, the combined Nordic nations would rank fourth in the world, with Finland and Denmark being the happiest and second happiest nations respectively. When it comes to military personnel, there is one country who would be pulling its weight far more than other nations. Finland. The Nordic countries have a combined military size of 1.1 million personnel, 900,000 of which would come from Finland. Iceland would give by far the least, as Iceland has no official military force. They are said to have just 130 personnel. However, Iceland is still part of NATO. Although it has no troops to offer, it has very valuable airspace which would seriously aid NATO if war did break out across the planet. Okay, so enough stats for now. We can clearly see these nations are all extremely successful, and if they were to merge together, they would be an economical powerhouse, all whilst offering their citizens some of the highest living standards in the world. But how on earth have they achieved this? Well, there is something called the Nordic model, but what exactly is it? The Nordic model is a term used to capture the unique combination of free market capitalism and social benefits that have given rise to a society that enjoys large amounts of top quality services, 
such as free education and healthcare. These benefits are funded by the citizens of these countries, aka the taxpayers, and these citizens have a high degree of trust in their government, which allows them to work together to reach compromises and address societal challenges through democratic processes. To put it simply, these countries have some of the highest tax rates in the world. In return, social programs are of extreme high quality. Those who don't earn a lot can still live a good life through social programs. And those who earn a lot will usually have a pretty good life anyway. Whether you agree with this economic strategy is another thing, but objectively, these are some of the best countries in the world to live in, in terms of quality of life. Now, of course, this strategy is not perfect. There are flaws in this model, which these countries are now starting to experience. Two of the biggest concerns are an aging population and an influx of immigrants. In terms of an aging population, a large base of young taxpayers and a small population of older residents receiving services is the ideal scenario. However, as the population balance shifts the other way, benefit reductions are a likely outcome. In terms of immigration, these countries attract a notable influx of newcomers seeking to enjoy the generous public benefits. Imagine you are from a developing nation that has been part of a decades-long civil war. Your education will likely have been severely hindered and you will most likely be very poor. Now imagine moving to a well-developed nation like one of the Nordic countries, which is extremely expensive. And not only that, you don't speak a single word of their language. The chances of securing a high-paying job to feed your children is very unlikely meaning many of these immigrants will have to survive purely on the social programs offered by the government, which in terms of economic progress isn't ideal. If the Nordic countries did combine to become one super country, they would claim some very strategically important territories, land, air and sea. They would dominate parts of the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, the Denmark Strait and North Atlantic Ocean all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. Iceland and Greenland's territorial claim would combine together to create the perfect choke point in the North Atlantic, an invaluable asset to have if a world war was to break out. The newly created union would have rich oil and gas fields. 30% of all iron ore of Europe, 50% of all the forest resources in Europe, and 20% of all fresh water in Europe. It would be a true northern powerhouse. Now, here's an interesting question. If this Nordic union was to happen, where would its capital city be? The candidates would certainly be three existing capitals. In my mind, it would be Oslo, Stockholm or Copenhagen. Helsinki is far too east and close to Russia, and Reykjavik is far too west and largely inaccessible. Copenhagen makes sense as it's just a stone's throw away from Sweden, although with Sweden being the biggest country of all these nations, perhaps they would want the capital to be within their borders. In this case, it could be Gothenburg or Stockholm. Let us know in the comments which Nordic city you think would make the best capital city. Another interesting question is, what would the official language be of this union? The Scandinavian languages are very similar to each other already. So there are a few options for a common language, the main ones being English, due to the fact that most people, especially the younger population, speak English fluently across the Nordic countries. Swedish, as it is the most widely spoken Nordic language, or a pan-Nordic language, which would require learning and would take a long time to formulate. In my opinion, I believe English would be the best bet. Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Finland all scored in the top 10 for the 2021 English Proficiency Index. English is also the most widely spoken language in the world and considered the language of business. This would give the region an economic advantage. If it were to choose the current most spoken language in the region, Swedish, this would not give them any economic advantage as not many people outside of Sweden actually speak Swedish. The only benefit is that it would preserve the Nordic identity. So how successful do you think a united Nordic region will be? Let us know in the comments and as well which city you think should be its capital. Thank you for watching this video and as always drop a like if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you didn't enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free and you can always unsubscribe at any time. Thanks again for watching and we will see you very soon in the next video.